Good evening. Uh, my name is Ed Bell. I'm standing in for Mayor Buckley tonight. Uh, this is a meeting of two meetings of one meeting of two. And before starting the sanitation meeting, uh, in lieu of roll call, I'll ask the members to introduce themselves starting on my far right. Dan McMillan, Clerk Treasurer. Craig Wiley, City Attorney. Sandy Seward. Thank you, Board. You've been handed uh, written minutes of October 3rd, 2016. And after reviewing the minutes, uh, do you have any corrections? I have none. Thank you, Ed. All right. Uh, after not having any, uh, we need a motion to approve minutes. I'll make said motion. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you. Uh, board before you, you have three pages of claims totaling 1000 or $104,346 in 91 cents. Do you have any questions? I have none, thank you. Okay, if we're not having any, I need a motion to approve the claims. An amount of $104,346.91. I'll make said motion. And I'll second. I'll approve. Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, there is no unfinished business to carry from the previous meeting and no new business tonight. Um, we'll just have any comments of the board members. None. Thank none. you. Okay. I have none this evening. So we'll have a motion to adjourn. I'll make said motion. And I'll second. And the meeting is adjourned at uh, five after six. Uh, word of works will start in five minutes. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ed Bell. And I'm standing in for Mayor Buckley tonight. Uh, this is the next meeting of the Board of Works. But before we start, in lieu of a roll call, I'd ask each member to introduce themselves, starting on my far right. Dan McMillan, Clerk Treasurer. Craig Wiley, City Attorney. Sandy Seward. Thank you, Board. You've been handed uh, written minutes uh, dated October 3rd, 2016. And uh, after reviewing, do you have any uh, changes that you see? I have none. Okay, and I have none either. I need a motion to approve said minutes. I'll make said motion. And I'll second. I'll approve. Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, we've, we have 23 pages of claims tonight in an amount of Five hundred eighty-four thousand six hundred thirty-five dollars and one cent. I've asked for any corrections at this time. I have none. I have none either. So I need a motion to approve. I'll make said motion. And I'll second. Thank you. All right. Um, we don't have any unfinished business to carry over from the previous meeting. Uh, we do have some new business. Uh, one in particular, we have a bid to open to, and to award. This is for re-chassis of the Ambulance 58. And I would ask Sandy to open we that have, bid, please. We have one sealed bid from one vendor. Okay. And the vendor is um, Donnelly. And it's a specification for the remount of ambulance number 58. And the bid for the total cost of the remount is $76,567. Seventy-six thousand five hundred sixty-seven. 
Okay. Thank you, Sandy. Mm -hmm. sure. if, if there's no other bids, um, make a motion uh, before we vote um, for the attorney to view and go over this bid. Um, and if it, everything is approved, um, we'll go further into it and award the, the bid. Chief, can you uh, tell us what all is involved in this now? Uh, yes. Um, if you recall, um, Dolly's, they did the refurbish um, our Medic 56, <coughs> which is currently in service at Station um, 56. It's the 2000 Horton that was refurbished. They did an excellent job for us. Um, with the bid specification, Donnelly's was the only um, manufacturer business that returned a specification. I had the opportunity to meet with their personnel and discuss this bid with them. Um, I believe I was told there's no exceptions um, for this bid that they turned in. Um, the price is below what was anticipated, um, and I believe this would be our best option at this time to go ahead and recommend to have Medic 58 refurbished with the remount. Okay, and uh, I guess I ask, is funds available for this thing? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, we're going to pay cash for this, and this is something that uh, we looked into earlier in the year when we did the turnout gear and the um, body armor for the police department. All right. Thank you. The other condition, if before we award it, would be obviously the attorney to go over the packet, make sure everything is okay, and then we'll hand it over to the chief to proceed. I would like to have a motion, though, to uh, to have Donnelly or the bid be approved tonight. So before we do the motion, well, does, we, does the bid go <coughs> to the attorney? Goes to, goes Rob. to Rob, or does it go to? Well, it'll go to Rob and then goes to the attorney for him to review. Okay. I'll make said motion to accept the bid from Donnelly. And I'll second. All approved? Say aye. 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 Thank you, board. Rob, I do have one question. <clears throat> um, as far as the re-chassis of these ambulances, is this something, I don't know how many miles the actual chassis has on it, is this something they can do more than one time or uh, the next time around are we looking at a new ambulance? Um, yes, it depends actually on the quality of the box. Um, with our Horton, um, it was a very solid unit. Um, we had it for um, quite a few years before we were able to get in for a re-chassis. Um, I know uh, Mike Smith is here from Donnelly's. He could probably answer a little bit further on that question. But IEMS has rechassied um, some of their units uh, up to five times. So this wow. is something that can continue on. Um, now with the units, um, the more you rechassis, um, you could come into some more difficulties um, with the boxes lined up for the new chassis. It might just have some more body work. Um, that needs to be done with those, more prep work to the box, um, just some different areas that, that might have to be um, machine shop, manufactured, um, to conform and fit with the new chassis. So, yes, you, you can do it more than once, and, but you might incur some other expense, not, you know, something that would make it worth buying a new one compared to having a remount done at this time. So. I know the one we recently did is working out fantastic. Well, and this is, ain't complaining. No, and this <coughs> is approximately half of what an ambulance yeah. would cost. So, yes, um, I, I want to thank this board also because with Medic Fifty Eight, um, I, I still call these ambulances <coughs> the, the new ambulances because we, you know, they were purchased um, in twenty twelve and twenty thirteen, and and to me they're still new, but. Um, this one has, I think, over 120 some thousand miles on it, and it, it definitely received. Um, we definitely received our good use out of it, and it, it's great that we can get it um, 
remounted before there's a lot of additional expense to the box. And that's what's saving us money. We don't have to repaint that box. We're going to um, do some body work, um, buff it out, get the areas restriped that needs it, and get it looking good and, and match up the cab, and we'll be ready to put it back on the street. So, Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Rob, while you're there, would you like to talk about the, um, the firefighter that we sent to help FEMA in the uh, – Hurricane Matthew. Yes, um, we had one firefighter on the Indiana Task Force, and she went with the task force. They were activated here, um, I believe it was October 6th, and they headed towards Georgia um, for a staging location. Um, they were able to get down to Dobbins Air Force Base, Georgia, um, where they stayed. The, the direct impact of Florida wasn't as bad as anticipated. They expected severe flooding up along the Georgia coast, um, south and North Carolina with the flooding. They did some recon work at Tybee Island, Georgia, and then they were moved um, to South Carolina um, to assist with uh, some flooding. Um, and then, thank goodness, the storm wasn't as bad as anticipated, and they were released and returned to Indianapolis last week. But I'm um, very proud of one of our members going, um, participating in the task force. Um, she's in the logistics area, so a lot of the planning of where they're going, what they're doing, um, fell on her shoulders. So we're definitely proud of her. So. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next is a recommendation to hire part-time of uh, Public Works. Brad Merritt Weather uh, won't be able to attend tonight uh, since spring break, and I'd like to have the clerk read this letter of recognition. In the Dear Board, it is my recommendation <coughs> to the Board of Works that the city hire Joe Ramey as a part-time worker at the Department of Public Works the parameters of the position will be that it will make $14 per hour maximum and allow no more than 29 hours a week. There is money in the sewage works budget to fund this position. If approved, Mr. Rainey would start on October 18th. Respectfully, Brad Merriweather. And I'll just tell you, this was a position that was created because the other part-timer went to full time, so right. had opened this position. So we have no problem with the funds whatsoever. Okay. Would I like to have a motion uh, to approve uh, Joe Ramsey for part-time position of public works? I'll make said motion. And I'll second. Thank you. Uh, next, we have a recommendation to hire several police officers tonight. Chief, could you come up and uh, read your letters of recommendation? I guess we'll do one at a time here, if yes. you would. Dear board, I'm requesting to hire uh, Elizabeth Keisler as a probation officer. Her start date will be October 23rd, 2016. And her pay will be forty six thousand five thirty six zero five, base plus a three thousand dollar certification <clears throat> since she has the academy. And if you approve this hire, she will start her FTO process on October twenty third. Elizabeth will be filling the spot left vacant when Captain Kelly Malloy retired. You have any questions for the uh, chief on Elizabeth Kaiser? I have none. I have none either. Like uh, motion on the floor to approve Elizabeth Kaiser. I'll make said motion. And I'll second. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, chief, we got another one here from uh, Joseph Garrison. Yes. Dear Board, I'm requesting permission to hire Joseph Garrison as a probationary <coughs> officer. His start date will be October 24th of 2016. His pay 
will be 46,536.05 as a base. He will then start the police academy and after graduation, he will start his FTO process. Joseph will fill the spot left vacant when Captain Craig Stevens retired. Now, will this bring the force back up to full? No, we okay. have two more that we could hire this year if we can okay. get the applicants. All right, thank you. Got any questions for the chief? I have none. All right. I'd like to have a motion uh, to approve Joseph Garrison for I'll the make, force. I'll make said motion. And I'll second. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, okay, the last one here. We have um, a request to approve position to move a second patrolman into first class. Yes. Dave, could you read that, please? Dear board, I'm requesting that you approve the position move from second year patrolman to first class patrolman for Tyler Frankel. This will take effect if approved on October 24th, 2016. His base pay will go from 52,917.87 to 57,267.86. And October 24th will be his anniversary date. Okay. I do have one question on this. Do you know if this is the start of a new pay period? Because it is, it is if not. not, I would like for it to, uh, for you to make a request of the next, uh, we just got paid Friday, so it'd only be a week anyways, which I think that will be the second week. So. But it, I'm not sure what you're asking, but his anniversary date is when he's supposed to be raised on that. And I don't know if our, uh, I don't know if that can actually be done because it, every year they're supposed to move up in position from first, second, or from probationary second year to first class patrolman. I, I don't know if Craig has an opinion on that, but I know a policy says that after one year they get their promotion. Right, which I'm not disputing the promotion. All I'm trying to say is uh, for accounting purposes and so forth, that it goes to the next pay period, and we've done that with others. Uh, so in other words, I, I think it falls that way because we've already got one weekend. Today's the 17th, so the 24th would be the start of the next pay period, I believe, but without looking at it, uh, that'd be my only thing. I don't know if that. And that's what you, that's what it says here, and it'll take effect if approved on October 24th. So it should be within the, the payroll. Friday. That's what I'm uh, hoping. Okay. If not, I would just want it approved subject to the next available full payroll. Well, okay, I understand that what you're saying, not paying before, but he gets his pay increase. But that would go into it. Can it go into effect on the 24th? but his pay doesn't go until the normal pay period. Is that what you're saying? Well, all I'm saying is I think the, the next pay period starts on the 24th, but without looking at it in front of me, uh, it, it just makes it so much easier from the standpoint of going to the next payroll, uh, which if the payroll starts on 24th, I have no problem whatsoever. If not, it would be a week different, but we just got paid Friday, so I, I believe that would be the, the correct date. Yeah, I, I don't know if that, that payroll Monday the 24th? That's the what I believe it to okay. be. Then but that shouldn't be a problem. I, yeah, then. Regardless, he wouldn't be shorted. He'd be kept caught up one way or the other. Right. Well, but the problem is when you send us over to payroll at one pay period for this they week and another up. pay period for the following week. Gotcha. And... So, you know, my request is of all department heads, whenever there was something, it would be the next available payroll. I think it's the next available payroll, but I think his pay should be paid on, start on the 24th. I, I, don't, I, I would think that AccuPay could figure that out, that say the 23rd he gets a certain amount of money and starting on the 24th, he gets 
another amount of money, but I don't know how difficult it is. I don't do payroll, so. I if there's going to be an issue, Dan, can you work with Chief and if it's not going to happen? And like I say, I believe that 24th <laughs> is the correct start date of the payroll, but they actually want me to give them two payrolls notice before any changes are ever made. I and I always have to call them and say, hey, we need to make this change, we need to make that change. So it's just something I ask of you guys to, uh, you know, to keep that in mind and try to start it like that. Okay. Because, you know, I mean, they've got subcontractors that do work for them too. And so then they got to call them after I call them and get it straightened out with their people. Get figured out. One I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> One way or the other. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we this need we, need we need a motion. Oh yes, <laughs> we do. I got forgot sidetracked on that. We need a motion for the uh, <clears throat> uh, step increase for Tyler Frankel. I'll make said motion. <clears throat> and I'll second. <clears throat> Thank you. That concludes, huh? All those in favor? And all in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, that concludes new business. Uh, comments from board members? No, I have none. Thank you. You have none? No. All right. Well, while everyone's out on spring break, I hope everyone's having it, uh, being safe out there, along with the mayor. <laughs> uh, I need a motion to close. Right, before you close, okay. Um, our next scheduled meeting is scheduled for Monday, November seventh. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Right At before 6 election. PM, right here in these chambers. Hey, right here in the chambers. Same time, same place. Have a motion to adjourn. Have a motion. I'll make a motion to adjourn. And I'll second. Thank you.